Hello and welcome by uh, the Cordiness Deep Dive. Uh, my name is uh, Mick Gibben. Uh, I started Cordiness in 2018, I believe. Uh, I'm still the project lead and I'm, of course, maintaining uh, Cordiness. I'm here with Jong to talk about uh, Cordiness and some details about plugins. Jong, can you introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this session. My name is Yang Tang. I'm a maintainer of Coding S. Uh, in today's uh, Coding S session, there are several things we want to cover. Uh, first, we're going to give a brief introduction about Coding S. And then we are going to discuss about the project update and what features has been added since last year. Uh, next, we are going to discuss about the service service discovery with, with DNS and how CoreDNS can play an important role in this, uh, in this field. Uh, next, we're going to showcase a small plugin. Uh, and finally, we're going to discuss about the CoreDNS community as well as a Q&A. As many of you know, CoreDNS is a flexible DNS server written in Go. It has a focus on service discovery. One interesting feature, one interesting thing about CoreDNS is that CoreDNS is plugin based, which means it can be easily extended. If there's any new feature you're interested, uh, you can always add new feature yourself as long as you know how to write in Gola. Uh, since Kubernetes 1013, CoreDNS is in the default DNS server, which means nowadays the CoreDNS is used by many people and many institutions around the world in production systems. Uh, Coding has, has many features. Coding has support DNS, DNS over TOS, DNS over gRPC, uh, and also Coding has a, a wide range of support for cloud DNS data sync up. For example, we have AWS Rock 3, uh, Azure DNS, and Google Cloud DNS sync up. Uh, okay, now let's come to the project update. Since last year, we have released 1.8 of CoreDNS. 1.8.0 was released on October 22nd, 2020. There are several plugins introduced uh, in 1.8. Uh, transfer plugin unifies all zone transfer code. Local plugin answers local queries. And then finally, minimal plugin provides minimal answers, which could be very, very useful if you want to reduce the, uh, the traffic of the DNS response. Uh, in 1.8, there are also several backward incompatibility change. In transfer and the DNS tab plugins, uh, if you ever touch the two plugins, you probably want to take a look to make sure you update your config file uh, in case there's a need. Uh, and also we have some other new up, upstream features in Kubernetes plugin that you want to take a look. Seems like endpoint slices could be very useful as well. <coughs> I'm going to discuss a little bit about service discovery and the core DNS. Uh, as many of you know, uh, in this day and age, you have a SDN which can give you all kinds of ability for networking. With SDN, you can assign any endpoint to any IP address as needed. So some people ask the question, is DNS still needed? There are several reasons DNS is important. First of all, DNS is nice in direction, and this is a indirection you probably want uh, when you deploy a production system. This indirection gives you the maximum flexibility, and it's easy and simple to change. Uh, the, the reason why the flag factor is important is that as your company or your, uh, or your system grow, you probably have faced a question of scale up over time. When you try to scale up, uh, DNS give you a very nice tool to achieve that goal. For example, one interesting setup with uh, a database is that in many enterprises, the database has been configured in a way such as a read write and the read access point are separated. This gives you the ability to scale up as needed in the future if you, you have more customers and the more customers that are reaching to your read-only database. But when, you, when your startup is small and you want to both get started, 
you can actually set the DNS to be pointing to the same IP address. Essentially, only need one uh, one database. But when your database, when when your uh, user user base getting bigger, you actually can just uh, split up the read write endpoint with a read endpoint. Essentially, scaling up nicely without without any interruptions. Uh, this bring another feature of DNS. DNS is distributed in nature and it scales to internet. Uh, and finally, DNS is important in that the DNS is very pervasive in IT infrastructure. Even if you have a, your IT sysadmin that's still maintaining a legacy system, they still probably need the DNS anyway. Many people ask a question about uh, if there's a need to set up a DNS server yourself. While nowadays you have a DNS service provided by cloud vendors, uh, sometimes you may still want to consider about uh, if it's needed to set up a DNS server. There are several reasons for that. DNS is a critical service, but at the same time, it's simple. Uh, DNS has different usage for public facing, where you need your customer, your, your customer may need to reach to you. DNS, it also could be internal, which means that your service will need DNS to find another service endpoint. Uh, for core DNS, core DNS has a diversified source of information. With core DNS, you can consolidate different sources like a Kubernetes, like a cloud vendors, like IT infrastructures, all those DNS records can be consolidated into one DNS server that's called DNS. And finally, while all the cloud vendors support many DNS service, and all cloud vendors claim that they have 100% SCOA, this 100% SCOA could be misleading. While the, uh, while the SCOA has been specified with 100%, the, the money you, you spend on DNS service for those cloud vendors are actually very small, which means in case there's a service interruption, the service credit refund you're going to receive is also going to be very small. I'll just give uh, uh, my personal experience uh, with the company I work for. Last year, we have a downtime related to AWS Router 3. Of course, after the downtime is over, we request a service credit, but to our surprise, we only get less than 50% of the money back, uh, not 50%, but we only get $50 of money back. Of course, that's better than nothing, but it does not help us anyway. And that actually is one thing we, we are currently exploring. That is, we are considering about the set up our own DNS server, uh, potentially with core DNS, because DNS is too critical and we cannot afford to have a downtime. Uh, with, with no service credit refund guaranteed to recover our financial losses. Okay, I'm going to hand over the slide to, to Mick. Uh, Mick will go over uh, demo plugin for us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're going to look at a, a small plugin, uh, the demo plugin. And, and basically, uh, depending on the client source address, it will reply with uh, IP 1111 or IP 8888. So it makes a tiny decision and then writes back uh, this reply to the client. So we're going to see how we're going to set this up in, in CoreDNS and uh, uh, how this all works from code to actually running this. Next slide, please. So if you want to write a plugin for CoreDNS, you need um, three methods or three functions to be implemented. Uh, an init function, which basically tells CoreDNS that this plugin exists. Uh, a setup function that takes uh, a caddy controller, which is basically the, the core file, the config file that we have. Uh, it parses the configuration and sets up internal structures. Uh, it adds a handler to the config object, object which is uh, an internal state in, in CoreDNS that not only does the plugin exist, but it's actually used in, this, uh, uh, in, in the current process. Uh, and these, these functions are called once. Uh, for each plugin in the core file. Then uh, the most important method is serve DNS, which is actually the meat of the plugin. Uh, it takes a context, uh, a DNS response writer, which is basically the client calling into core DNS, and a DNS message, which is the request. Uh, the DNS protocol also uses the same, well, the, the library we use also uses this structure to write back to the client. 
this function now this method returns two values, an int and an error. Uh, the int is basically a signal to coordinates if something has been written, and an error is returned if, if something goes horribly wrong. Next slide, please. So at the top of this slide, we see the init function, which is fairly simple. We call a plugin register with the name of this uh, plugin, which is demo, and setup, which is the setup function that we have, which you see below this. The setup function itself, uh, as we saw on the previous slide, takes a caddy controller. It's, it's fairly simple because uh, the demo plugin doesn't use a lot of configurations. It's just demo in the core file. So we skip that word, demo. Uh, we don't expect any uh, other arguments. If they are, we return an error. If uh, that all looks good, we will tell Cordian as that this plugin needs to be added to the plugin chain for this server. So we can run the demo plugin. And we return nil, uh, re uh, saying there are no further errors. Next slide, please. So as said, the serve DNS method is the meat of the plugin. So this thing needs to check uh, what the source IP is and then basically make a decision on what to return to the, to the client. Uh, state uh, will get some, some is a, a handy struct you can use. Uh, in this case, we will get the query name from the uh, client question, uh, the, the, which is used in the uh, login you see, the font print, printf uh, later down. You set a reply to 888 because that's the default that we want to return to all clients. Except if the client source IP uh, starts with 172 or the client source IP starts with 127. In that case, we set reply to 1111. Uh, something not shown here, but we will then uh, make another DNS message, uh, put that stuff in there, and we'll write that back to the client. So uh, depending on your source address, you will either see 888 or 1111. And that's basically it. Next slide, please. So we want to use a demo. So we want to write a core file. The core file that you see here uh, says that it's authoritative for dot. We're running on a port 1053. Uh, we don't have any other plugins in here except the one that we got showcasing, which is demo. So this is uh, all that we need. We save this uh, under uh, the name core file. And then we can, next slide, please. Next slide, you? Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, then we can compile Coordinates with our new uh, demo plugin. To do this, we need to add a demo colon demo to plugin.config and then either build with Docker or do a go generate and a go build. This will uh, hopefully give you a Coordinates binary. And if we just start dot slash Coordinates, it will pick up uh, a core file in the current directly, directory, which we just made which uh, will run uh, Cordian on port 1053 with our demo plugin. If you would now query, we would see uh, it either returning 1111 or 8888, depending on our source address. Uh, the code for this plugin is online uh, in the Cordian organization on GitHub, uh, and the documentation can be found on Cordian SIO in the X plugins. And with that, I want to hand back to Jung, who's going to tell a bit about the Cordian S community. Uh, thanks, Mick. Okay, I'm, I'm going to discuss about the Cordian S community. Uh, as of now, we have a 307 contributors. Uh, big thanks to, to everyone who contributes to Cordian S repo. We also have 26 maintainers, uh, and this number is keep increasing. I'm going to discuss a little bit about how to become a maintainer uh, later on. Uh, we have 32 public doctors so far. Uh, and we also have 8,000 stars at the moment, which is a big achievement, by the way. Uh, for the past several years or so, we have uh, coding has been engaging in several programs. The first program is uh, LFX by Linked Foundation. Uh, LFX program uh, originally was named the Community, uh, Community Bridge Program. For the past three years, we participated in this program and this program generates several interesting plugins. As you can see, we have a Google Cloud DNS plugin, which actually is a one of the default plugin 
as of today. Uh, this year, there's also another student that's currently working on ACME support, which is a very interesting feature that has been requested by the community for a long time. We hope this ACME support can land this year. Another program uh, we participated for the past several years is the Google Summer of Code. Uh, as you can see, there are also several plugins that's very important to call DNS has been landed in this program. The DNS tab plugin is used by many nowadays in production systems. The ACL plugin has been used by many people as well, just to give a very, a very easy way to set up a firewall type of uh, access control. And the last year, there was a student uh, wrote a machine learning based DNS threat detection, which actually could be very fun and easy to, to see. Uh, finally, I'm going to discuss about uh, what you can do if you want to, to be involved in the community. The first thing you can do is to start coding us in GitHub if you haven't done so. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, 8,000 or so uh, starts uh, now. Uh, nowadays, uh, starts is the most important thing. So if you haven't done so, uh, try to start in coding us. Uh, the second way you can help coding us is to add the name to a doctors.md. The if your institution or enterprise use coding as, and if your institution or enterprise uh, does not mind to share the name, you can add a uh, create a pull request, uh, add the entry to a doctors.md, which will give a, a big list of uh, our public adopters as well at the same time, allow you to be the coding as contributor which is a nice thing. Uh, and also, if you are interested, you can participate in GitHub or Slack channel discussions. Uh, in Slack, uh, the channel name is coding as um, slack.cncf.io. Uh, you can also create a PR to become a contributor, as I mentioned uh, just a moment ago. If you can add an entry in doctors.md, you already became a contributor. And finally, you can also consider to be a maintainer as well. In order to be a maintainer, you need to have one significant pull request to be merged. And as long as you can find, you can get one pull request merge, uh, significant pull request merge, and you can find the maintainer uh, to support you, we will add you as a maintainer. And this uh, coding as maintainer will be, will, will be kind of like, like a nice badge for you and help you to advance your career and hopefully to get more recognition from the community. I think that's uh, that's it for today. So next we're going to talk, discuss about the Q and A. If you have any question, you can ask out.